Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the Lenovo ThinkBook 15P. This is kind of in the middle of the ThinkPad and the IdeaPad lines, kind of a mid-range small business laptop. And this one looks like it's geared towards creative professionals. And we're going to be taking a deeper dive into what this laptop is all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now the price point on this one as configured is about $1,400 or so. And there's going to be different configurations of the laptop depending on where you're shopping for it. So this particular one appears to be the top end version. It has an i7-10750H processor. That's a six core i7 chip. It also has an NVIDIA GTX 1650 Ti GPU. That is the Max-Q variant. So it's a little more uh, efficient for portable usage, although the battery life on this one is not great. Uh, this one also has a really nice display. This is a 4K display, 15.6 inches, and it runs at 600 nits. So when you've got the brightness turned up on it, it is super bright, if I can find the key here. Right now it's unplugged, so it'll get a little brighter when we do plug it in. Uh, note, though, that these 4K bright displays do come at the cost of battery life, and you're only going to get about maybe five or six hours of usage out of it depending on what you're doing. So just be aware of that. But if you want something relatively portable with a nice display, the 4K variant here, I think, looks great. Uh, they've got some color calibration tools built in. Uh, the 4K display here, they say, runs at 100% of the Adobe gamut. And the other version of this that has a 1080p display runs at 100% of the sRGB gamut. Now, the review loaner that we got here has 16 gigabytes of RAM. You can upgrade that to 32. There's also two NVMe storage slots inside. This model has one of those slots occupied by a 512 gigabyte SSD. And there's another slot for a second one if you want to add that. It's pretty easy to get inside of it. You just pop the bottom lid off and you're in. So it has some of the features that you might like on the more expensive ThinkPads, which is ease of maintenance. And they've got a very nice maintenance manual on their website for this one as well. Build quality feels good. It's about 4.19 pounds or 1.9 kilograms. That's lighter than I expected it to feel for a laptop of this size. It's made mostly out of lightweight aluminum, so it does have decent stability if you're holding it up like so. It doesn't bend all that much. The bezels around the display are plastic, but everything else is aluminum. It looks pretty nice here. It's branded with all the ThinkBook branding and the Lenovo branding that you've come to expect there. So altogether a nice physical package. And the display hinge feels pretty good on this one. You've got a good range of motion on it. It will go mostly flat, but not all the way flat. It is not a touch display though, so you will need to use your traditional input methods here. But it is fairly well balanced. As you can see, when I pull up the display here, it's not taking the rest of the keyboard with it. I always like to see that little touch when I'm reviewing these things. Uh, the keyboard and trackpad feel pretty nice on this one. It's got the Lenovo consumer keyboard here, not the ThinkPad keyboard. Travel on it isn't bad. Nice keys, well-spaced, very similar to some of their other laptops we've looked at. The number pad here is also very nice, just smaller keys on the numbers versus the letters. So you may have to get a little bit used to the key differences here if you're banging in a lot of numbers. But I do like the layout of this, including the very big plus button there like you would see on a more traditional adding machine or something. Uh, right here you've got a trackpad, a little springier than I would like, but still uh, quite nice and accurate, so nothing much to complain about there. The keyboard is backlit as well, so you can see it in the dark. And they also integrated a fingerprint reader into the power button. You can see that right up there, so that's pretty handy. Let's take a look at the ports we got on this one now, on the left-hand side first. Uh, this is where your power connector goes. It does have a larger power supply than you might see on a smaller laptop, primarily because it has to power that GPU. So you've got a 135 watt power adapter here. Next to that, you've got gigabit ethernet. I always love seeing ethernet on laptops. It's nice to have that port integrated without the need for a dongle. Uh, next to that, you've got HDMI for your secondary display. USB 3 is next to that one. And then you've got a USB Type-C port, uh, but note that this port is data only. It doesn't do display output, 
nor does it do power input. It is strictly for USB devices. It is not Thunderbolt either. Uh, next to that one, you've got your headphone microphone jack. And then on the other side, we have a full-size SD card reader, but the cards will stick out a bit when you put them in. This is about as far in as it goes, so you're not going to walk around with that card in all the time. Uh, next to that one, you've got another USB 3 port, and then some vents here for the cooling system. And then back here, you've got a Kensington lock to lock it down on the desk. So a little lacking on the ports here, but you still have a good number to work with on the laptop. Let's get this thing booted up and see how it performs. All right, let's start off with a little web browsing just to see how we do on the nasa.gov homepage. We'll go and select that real quick and see how fast everything pops up here. I am running this at 4K with a 200% scale. Um, so it seems to be working pretty nicely here. The display quality is excellent. In fact, it's so bright, it's kind of blowing out my camera here. So I'll dim it down a little bit so you can get a feel for the rendering speed. Uh, but as expected, this is really performing quite nicely at doing a real basic task here, like browsing the web. And you shouldn't have any real problems doing any kind of productivity work on this. And again, this is really well suited also for creative professionals working with Photoshop and some of the other applications out there. It's also good for video production, OBS and vMix and all of that sort of stuff should work pretty nicely here too. A little bit earlier, we ran some 4K video on YouTube with this at 60 frames per second. We did get a couple of drop frames here or there, but nothing that was all that noticeable. And this was also running with the display at 200% at 4K. So all in, I think, media consumption, uh, media creation to some degree isn't going to be too bad on here either, and the performance is good. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 137. That puts it right in line with a few other Lenovo machines that we've looked at running with the same processor, so it's performing as expected there. It's also going to do well for video conferencing, things like Zoom and Google Meets and the Microsoft Teams and whatnot. All of those will work fine. The webcam, though, isn't great. I'll show you an image I took with it a little bit earlier. Uh, this is a 720p webcam. It looks rather cloudy, actually, so not the best video quality out of this thing, but it is functional for getting on calls and stuff. But if you want better quality, you might want to connect up a better camera. Uh, there is a shutter here at the top, a little physical shutter that we've seen on other Lenovo devices, so you can block the camera without having to use a piece of tape or something like that. So all in, not bad for video conferencing either. Let's take a look now at some fun stuff, games. Now remember, we've got that NVIDIA 1650 Ti built into this review loaner, and we're getting really good graphical performance out of it. Uh, here in GTA 5, we're getting about 60 frames per second at 4K at the lowest settings and it seems to be running pretty nicely. Occasionally, you'll get into the high 50s on the frame rate, but for the most part, it's at 60. Pretty good experience there on GTA 5. Uh, this is Rocket League running at the highest settings in 4K, and here also we were getting 60 frames per second or above with occasional dips into the high 50s, but overall, great experience here. And this is Fortnite running at 4K set to high settings. Generally, it was in the high 40s to low 50s for frame rate, although you will see it go up into the 60s when you're uh, in different parts of the map here. But a good experience on Fortnite, and I'm sure you could find a setting that will work well for the frame rate that you want to hit. Uh, here is The Witcher 3 set at 1080p ultra settings. Uh, this one was doing about 50 frames per second, not bad either. And again, you can adjust those settings down a bit to get something that works a little better for you. And then the last one here is Doom. This is the 2016 version of Doom. And this is running at 1080p ultra settings. And here you can see we're in the 70 to 80 frames per second territory, which is also very good. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 3,782. That puts this one pretty much on par with the Legion 5 gaming laptop, also from Lenovo, at least graphically. Uh, but that gaming laptop has a faster Ryzen 7 processor on board and gets a better overall score. And it also might be good for some low-end VR. We got a score of 5,159 on the VR Mark Orange Room test, and we were able to maintain a frame rate of 112.46 frames per second on that. Uh, that test is geared 
mostly towards lower end VR experiences. So some of the older VR titles that came out three or four years ago, along with the newer titles at their very lowest settings. But you can do some VR work on here. And if you're looking to play around with it with an Oculus Quest or something, this should be able to maintain a somewhat reasonable frame rate. On the 3D Mark stress test, we got a passing grade of 99.50%. That's a very good score, which indicates the computer can keep itself cool even under heavy sustained load. And we're not seeing any thermal throttling going on with this. Uh, there are, of course, fans on board on this device, and you're going to hear those fans, especially when you place the computer under load. Uh, we did not hear the kinds of loud fan noises you get out of a gaming laptop, so it's not bad but it's definitely audible. And sometimes when it's sitting idle and Windows is doing some updates in the background, you're gonna hear that fan kick on also. Uh, so just be ready, there is some fan noise with this one, but not as bad as what I've seen on some gaming laptops out there. Now the speakers on this one are downward firing. They've got the Harman Kardon branding on them. Doesn't sound too bad, and you've got good stereo separation on it. Very clear and crisp and loud, but not a lot of bass, but otherwise, uh, the speakers were better than I expected on this one, but for the best audio quality, you'll want to plug in headphones or attach some Bluetooth headphones to it. And one last thing to take a look at today, and that is its Linux performance. We booted up Ubuntu 20.10. Everything worked. That included the display, the 4K resolution, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, audio. Everything just seemed to work and boot right up and ran just as nicely in Linux as it was in Windows. So if you're looking to run some different operating systems on here, you'll probably be able to get away with that. And overall, I think it's a very solid laptop from Lenovo. Again, it kind of sits in the middle of their consumer and business laptops, hence the ThinkBook name versus the ThinkPad name. It's decently built, performance is great. I'm very pleased with the display. I was very surprised to see a display of this quality on something like this. So if you are somebody that's doing some graphical work or wants to play a game every once in a while, uh, this does seem to be performing quite nicely. And I think at its price is fairly reasonable given the specs here. It's definitely performing at a level that some more expensive laptops perform at. And if you don't need all the uh, pretty industrial design of those devices, you can get into something like this with similar performance for less money. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Mark Bollinger, Sergio Morales, Mark Dell, Jim Callagher, and Stephen Sue. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.